What is going on? It is the obscurest tourist here once again. And well, I was just out on a little bit of a bike ride down on the Lower Don Trail here in the east end of Toronto. And I stumbled upon a bunch of ruins like this one right behind me. But they aren't exactly ruins. So what are they? Well, guess what? I'm gonna tell you all about them right now. This place is pretty amazing. I really, really love the location of it. And as I get into what this place actually is, you'll see that this location is quite significant to the placement of these very stones. Now, as I said, I was out for a bike ride and stumbled upon this place thinking it was just a bunch of abandoned adornments from demolished buildings in Toronto. Though that isn't a crazy conclusion to jump to considering the existence of the Witch's Circle, abandoned stone heads scattered around Dufferin Grove Park from the demolished Toronto Custom House built back in 1845. And I actually did a video about the Witch's Circle a few months back and you can find the link to that video in the description below this video. Additionally, there are a bunch of classic stone columns and structures from old Toronto buildings sitting in Guild Park in the East End here in Toronto, a place I've been meaning to visit for some time. But I'm here now, so let's talk about these particular stones. As I said, these aren't actually abandoned. However, my initial instinct that these are somehow connected to old buildings in the cities wasn't completely wrong. This entire scene spread out in front of me is actually an art installation called Monsters from Beauty, Permanence, and Individuality created by artist Dwayne Linklater. Linklater found the inspirations for his sculptures while looking closely at Toronto buildings built of brick after the Great Fire of 1904. He hunted the city with his camera looking for the late 19th and early 20th century buildings so he could photograph the gargoyles, grotesque faces, and various animals that adorned them. His photographs were then cast in concrete to create 14 structures in total. To learn more about this installation, I've included a link in the description below this video. Now, many of us think of gargoyles as a throwback to old Europe and specifically Gothic and or medieval architecture that adorned castles, cathedrals, and other structures from that time. But did you know that Toronto architecture is infested with these carved stone creatures, also known as grotesques. These gargoyles emerged around the city as resource extraction accelerated, especially along this very area along the Don River, adjacent to the evergreen brickworks just across the river. To meet the needs of a rapidly growing city, the valley's hills were cut and carved away for their clay and minerals. So, as I said earlier, the location of this is important and fitting because these creatures have found their way back from whence they came. Up 
I myself have always been fascinated by gargoyles, and as a young boy I often found myself staring up at the many faces and creatures adorning the facades of these buildings high above the streets. But do you actually know what a gargoyle is and what purpose it serves? Well, they have two main purposes. Gargoyles were built to scare off evil. And I'll get into the story behind this purpose in a second. Gargoyles, however, also served a practical purpose. They helped divert rainwater away from the walls to prevent erosion of the mortar that holds a building together. You'll notice that gargoyles usually have an odd, elongated shape because their length actually determines how far from the building's walls the rainwater is deposited. Now, let's explore why gargoyles were used to ward off evil in the first place. The word gargoyle actually originates from the old French word gargouille, meaning throat, but which also describes the gurgling sound of water as it's coming down the downspout. The name gargouille is derived from a French dragon slang legend. For centuries, according to the story, the dragon terrorized Normandy until around 600 BCE. He swallowed up ships along the River Seine, ate women and children, and regularly flooded the neighborhood of ruin. It wasn't until a priest named Romanus came along and agreed to vanquish the beast in exchange for the townspeople's conversion to Christianity. Romanus tamed the dragon by making the sign of the cross then led it into town where it was burned at the stake. The creature's head, however, wouldn't burn, so the townspeople cut it off and affixed it to their church. The Gargui's head became a ward against evil and a warning to other dragons. And believe it or not, the city of Ruin even has a professional ice hockey team named the Dragons in homage to its scaled past. So, the next time you're walking around a city, look up because you never know what lurks above. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little visit to Dwayne Linklater's Monsters for Beauty art installation here on the Lower Don Valley. If you're like me, you had no idea it was even here. So, here I am, showing you things every day and showing myself while I'm at it. Does that even make sense? I don't know. For now, it is Obscurist Tourist wishing you all the best. Stay safe, stay beautiful, and until next time, see you later.